What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. What's up guys, welcome back to another stream and today we're going to be taking a look at my texture effects stencil here. Uh, this stencil has a few different uh, stencils included, so we're going to take a look at it, we're going to open it up, we're going to see how it comes, then we're going to go through a quick little demo just showing you guys a quick and easy way to use these stencils. So first off, let's go ahead and open it up and see what's in here. <clears throat> so the stencils come in a plastic wrapper and again these are meant to be reused so you can easily peel back this adhesive here pull out your stencil contents bam then you can easily just set this aside and when you're ready you just put your stencils back in press this adhesive back down and your stencils will be nice and ready for next time Pretty simple. Included in the kit, you get one, two, three, four stencils. And um, these are pretty great uh, for just general texturizing of certain things. Certain effects, it makes them easier to get. And then again, we have this one, which is just Texture City here. Um, this one's great for bubbles and just different effects within graphic lines. Um, and again, we'll go through a quick demo showing you guys here how these different stencils work so then we got this big long boy here that almost looks like a wood bar um, and yeah there's obviously the main use that you can see right away is that it's good for laying wood grain but there's actually other uses for the something like this and we'll show you guys in a minute these stencils are 6 mil mylar on one side, so one side you'll see is nice shiny plastic. Um, and it's super durable, it's not going to break or anything like that. Um, you know, so, and it is chemical resistant, so you could use automotive paints if you need to. On the other side is the paper side, so that a lot of people ask why, about the, why the paper side exists. And that is because the paper is semi-absorbent, so if you're working with reduced paints, um, if you're using a lot of this, um, you're gonna, you know, your paint's just a little wetter. Maybe you're spraying urethanes, but you have it heavily reduced. Uh, the paper kind of is semi-absorbent, so as you're spraying, it will help to mitigate some of that by absorbing it and kind of dissipating it off a little quicker. Um, and it helps to get us so that you don't get a smudge on your surface. So while you're working, you know, that buildup of paint on the edge usually can cause a smudge on your surface. It happens to me, it happens to everybody, and it could lead to having a bad day. So yeah, that's what you get in this kit. Now let's go ahead and set up a canvas here, and we'll go through a quick little demo showing you guys how to use this particular kit. So here we have our canvas. <clears throat> What's up, Stephen Ward? What's up, Dieter? How's it going? And again, we'll just go through some quick little sections here. What's up, Thomas Thompson? How are you doing? And for those watching in the future, this is being shot live. So first of all, welcome. And second of all, if, if it sounds like I'm talking to just some random person, is because there's a chat. And I'm just looking over at the chat. So... Anyway, we'll get started here, and we'll just start off with this bubbles, uh, the bubbles stencil here. Now this one's pretty self-explanatory. I've used this um, for creating bubbles on you know surfaces. So like you know, if people ask for a name, they ask for bubbles. You lay some of this along with some nice round circles, you get a cool little effect. You're painting some fish or something like that. You get some you know you have a blue background. You get some white. You just spray a little bit of white over these and you got a nice little 
bubble effect kind of going. Um, I have also used this for like when I'm doing a mural or something bigger and I want to create some texture. Like uh, I used it one time I was doing a Hulk mural and I wanted the Hulk's uh, skin to kind of look like, you know, it had like pores and stuff. So I used this on some of his skin and it gave a really cool effect of like, oh man, like he was like, you know, like had the texture of skin. So it wasn't just like a, a, a smooth, glossy Hulk. He actually had skin texture. Um, but we'll go through a quick demo and to, for today we're going to keep it simple like always. We're going to use a little bit of black and a little bit of gray just to demonstrate you guys how this works. So we'll start by loading in some gray. Dieter Lenners, is it possible to send stencils to Belgium? Um, so I believe so. Uh, the best way to check is to actually go on the website, create an order, and then checking to see if it'll let you place the order. Uh, there's very few countries that are blocked, so your chances are pretty high. And I do believe I've mailed stencils to Belgium already, so you should be good. But the best way to check if we send to your country is to actually just go on the website and look. Um, because, like I said, there are certain ones that, that at the moment, we cannot spray to. Not saying that we won't in the future, but there's just some that we just can't send to right now. Or it's not feasible at the moment. I'm just loading up some gray and a little bit of black, just so I have them preloaded so I don't have to do it again. <clears throat> okay, so now we start with some gray here. And like I said, like if we have a fish, right, paint it up, and then I'll mask off the fish, like the edge of the fish, and I just want some bubbles kind of in the background, something like that. I'll just come in with this uh, uh, stencil and do something like that, and you'll have a nice little bubble trail going up, and I'm actually going to drop this pressure a little bit. There you go. Um, so that's kind of the, the easiest way. And like I said, also, you can use this top stuff like this. It's kind of what I was doing on the Hulk guy. And we did a whole bunch of that, you know, going all the way around. And the good thing is it has little pins. All right, so you can do that. Going all the way around. And then maybe in areas that are closer, you know, I was doing some of this. Like on some of, like, his hand and stuff, I did some really... So it gave a really cool effect. Um, but that's pretty much it for this guy. You get that that nice bubble effect. But you can also create some cool, just texturizing with it, right? So if you needed to make like some kind of concrete with pits and stuff like that, it's also possible to do it with this stencil if you just get a little creative, right? So that's kind of the whole purpose. Like I said, with most of my stencils, it's just to kind of help you achieve things that maybe an airbrush can help you do. And, uh, you know, that are reusable in multiple scenarios. So you'd be able to use this on, on multiple projects, not just, not just one thing. So all I'm doing is going back with some black and just being a little tactical of where I want to put stuff. And maybe I'll just go back in with a little shading here. Bam. And there you go. You can easily create all kinds of stuff with this stencil. You see what I mean by just a little, little bit of a rock pitted look? Are you guys in close to see that? What's up, things? Your stencil orders, like, right there. <laughs> We're waiting on the box, so we have we didn't have a box kind of big enough. <clears throat> but there you go. You see that? Quick little way of getting that bubble stencil to do more than just bubbles, right? You get it. 
you can get a cool kind of effect going with it. But again, the easiest use case is like you're just painting on blue, you just want some bubbles, you just get a little bit of white, spray it over, bam. What's up, Air Space? How's it going? Thomas Thompson, how you doing, sir? High dollar easel. Oh yeah, that you love that easel. <laughs> Um, a gallon of clear is a lot for an easel. <laughs> Alright, so we'll move on to the next one here. But yeah, the bubble stencil, pretty good. Pretty good. Use this quite a bit. Like, I, I actually had just did an event. And one of the things the kids really liked was I was throwing this around the names, like as like a kind of like a splatter effect around all the names and stuff. And the kids really liked that. I had a couple of the kids specifically request that they get something like that on theirs. And uh, just so we keep it going. <clears throat> uh, the next one here is what I like to call the Amiibo set. Because to me, <laughs> it looks like uh, when you look at something under a microscope, right? So I'll just go to give you a quick spray here. What's up, Enzo? How's it going? So I like doing this one on stuff too. You see how it kind of, you can't see. There you go. It gives it that effect like of a, you know, you're just looking at something under a microscope and you see those little things just moving around. And I've also used this for texturizing a lot too and stuff. Um, depending on the colors you're using, you can really get some cool effects out of this. But the cool thing about this is it also comes with this edge, right? So you can kind of come in here and I've kind of created an edge here separating where I sprayed the first pattern and where I sprayed the second one. And we just blend that off with a little bit of gray, right? And now it looks like this amoeba is kind of trying to take over this. You know, this is like one jelly taking over the other jelly. And then maybe we could bring in some some of this guy over here. We'll put in some of this. So again, it was all about just how do I you know, create that effect without having to work too hard at it. And that's kind of where it's at. You could also move it too as you're spraying. So if you want to kind of give the stencil some motion as you're spraying and it'll give it more of a, you know, scattered, blurred out effect. And it really looks cool mixing it in. And again, we'll just hit the edge here and we'll come back in with some black. There you go, governor. And I'll just come in with a little bit of black. I'll hit the edge first just so we get a good look. Bam. And maybe we'll reinforce some of this edge here. But we could also bring it in, like coming in this way, so just to give it some depth. Maybe add one guy coming out, sticking out back here. Maybe bring one over here. Bam. And then same thing, we could bring one coming from the top, going down. And then we could give him a little shadow here, a little shading. You can have all kinds of fun just creating a little freaking cellular life. You know, I like this stencil a lot. Again, I've used this for just various things. A lot of patterning and stuff like that where I'm just, I have an area and I just want to cover it with something. This is really good, especially when you start using colors, metallics, stuff like that. It really gives it a really cool edge and look. So, next up, I'll try to leave this area kind of 
big here, so we could just use the wood stencil in here. Right, I'm just gonna use the wood stencil because this one's kind of more. I'm gonna try to do a couple of things with this one. <laughs> this one is, I yeah, I gotta explain that. But the wood stencil is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you want to use it to lay wood grain, you obviously have mask off your area. You would come in with browns, but we're using gray and black today just to demonstrate. All right, so I'll start in with some gray. You would start in with some, you know, maybe having a tan surface, and then you would come in with some brown, some light brown. Lay your pattern in for your wood, right? Like this. So you're just not very good at laying that wood pattern in. Bam. Then all you gotta do is reinforce that. Just come in here, do a little bit of freehand in there. Right, but all the pattern is laid out for you. All you gotta do is follow it. Right? You ain't gotta go off the path, nothing like that. Just Lay some accent lines to reinforce what's already there. And again, it's kind of it's kind of foolproof at this point. come in with your darker colors like say you're gonna come in with a darker brown right just to lay in some really nice detailed spots there um, you really want to be coming close and get your nice fine lines you don't want to lay the stencil back in uh, you know again I really wouldn't recommend it if you do it's just maybe to like just slight you know hints going this way that way Try to get it back where you had it, and that's it. And you'll, you'll see, all I did is just those little black spots here and little black spots there, and that's all we're doing, right? Oh, there's just those little black spots, boom. Nothing too crazy. And then we just wanna bring those nice, fine strokes in there just to reinforce the gray but you don't want to bring it, overdo it. The same if you're doing wood, you know, don't overdo it with the dark brown. Just kind of reinforce what you've already done. Maybe give the shading, you know, to just some of the lines and stuff. But that is pretty simple. Now, oddly enough, I've also used this stencil for creating waves. So if I'm painting like a scenic, um, you know, kind of a design and I have a skyline and there's a little ocean coming down, I've laid this down and just using a little bit of white and just kind of moving it around and I could create waves with it. So that's also another way of using that. But there you go. You got your, let's see if I can zoom it out some. Maybe it's better this way. There you go. So you got a quick little wood green texture. Boom. And then and then we have this last piece. Which is probably out of all these pieces, like these are already pretty versatile. Again, using your imagination, you could really use these for a lot. I've used this one like so much, it's just retarded. I, the the one I one of the ones I have that's like this is completely caked in paint and I've had to replace it a few times and I have other ones obviously for today we just opened the package as a new one but one of the other ones I have over there is completely just like the paint is pretty thick on there because I've used it so much um, then we have the last one which I like to call the brush you know like a comb like a brush because it has this 
feather effect here. Um, so again, this is kind of a more of your imagination kind of thing, but I'm going to show you just the quick ways that I've used this in the past. And I'll start off by masking off this. Now, one quick, easy way you can use this is making grass, right? So, like, one of the situations I've run into is where I need to make grass, right? So, what I'm going to do is just take the back of the stencil and mask this off here so we just don't get no overspray in here. Real quick, you see this? I've just laid some masking tape on the plastic side to cover up these, so I'm going to spray on these, right? So I'm just going to use a little bit of gray here, and we're going to layer in some grass. Now, it's easy to do. I've just kind of started at the bottom, hit it with some gray, bam, move over a little bit to the other side. Boom. And just kind of just vary it up. Maybe just spray a little layer here. Then you got another guy coming in here. All right. Every time though, you're trying to avoid going all the way to the edge. You just want the tips. All right, you just want the tips of it. You don't want to go all the way down. It's really not necessary to go all the way down to create the effect. And you can just go all the way. So again, if you're doing anything where you just want to layer in some grass and a little and a little black background whatever it is you just need some kind of even fur if you're doing fur something like that and you just want to add some nice sharp edges super easy to do and once you kind of get good at it you can kind of just move around and get it all in there. And I'm just gonna come back in with some black. And we could just come in with the black here at the very edge. And we'll make sure to fill those in nice and dark. Going back. Um, and I'll just hit this edge just so we have some differentiation there between the next coat. There you go. Just a quick way of adding some grassy texture. And that's just one part of this, right? So, like, that's just that. Um, obviously, you have a bigger grass over on this side. Um, but then let me show you the, the rest of this stencil. <laughs> because, yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize how uh, handy I made this until after I've been using it for a while. Um, it's actually come in quite handy. So, right now we have these center lines here. And... Um, there's quite a bit of use for these. So like, I didn't think <laughs> it would be so handy, but like say one, we have a pinstripe like this, right? Just, we just want to fill in that pinstripe. We want to add some stripes in that pinstripe. So you got these already kind of masked off and I'll just hit it with some black real quick just to make it pretty obvious. Right, so having those cut, like bam. Then you just match it up to the last one. Uh, and up to the last one again, bam. Right, and then we just hit that edge there. And now you got like a zebra pinstripe, look at that. Right, <laughs> I didn't even work hard for that at all, but like that's really cool looking. There you go. Alright, 
so let's see if we can just stay right here since that's where we're working. Good. Perfect. So you see you can get a nice little pinstripe just out of those little effects. Also, if you need to create some different kind of um, just waves, stuff like that, that's really good. You have multiple ones. You got curved ones here. You got more curved ones. Then we get to this end, right? <laughs> this right here. Now, I've used this for so much stuff that it's kind of funny, and you got different ones here. Um, I've used this for doing, like, eyebrows on portraits, right? Because it kind of has that the hair look. And I'll kind of show you what I mean real quick. So, right, I need to do an eyebrow, like I'm doing a portrait. So I'll lay this in. And I'll just come in here. Bam. But then I just add a little little freehand hairs. And there you go. Right? Just like really quick. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh send it a double set to Belgium Dieter it can afford it to the Netherlands. <laughs> I got me an order laser and I like to make stencils also. Right on? Cool. So, um, this is also like just a really cool way of adding that. Also, like um, if you're working on a dark color and you come in and you spray some white over this, and we'll just kind of go over here, try to show you with the black. But you can kind of create a really cool webbing effect, like weaving. And if you're working on dark to white, it's really really nice right let's see how close I can get you guys there that's perfect right and that's just using black and like if I just wanted to create a texture over everything like say I'm just there's again maybe a doing a portrait of like a dog or something and you just want to come in and cover him in fur you could easily just get that whole nice effect real quick and easy oh what happened here oh my gosh what is this what is this settings here It was going nuts. Why was it going freaking nuts like that? That's wild. But yeah, this is also like just for laying in furry type things, anything like that where you just need some some furries. This is <laughs> by far uh, way more handy than, than I ever thought it was going to be. go so there you go guys um, let me peel this there is the texture effects kit Let's see here and again it's just something that will help you create your artwork it's not really meant for one specific design or anything like that this set again includes four different pieces and uh, depending on what particular artwork you're working on at the moment um you know it might come in handy it might not you never know but definitely good to have in your arsenal so depending on what you're doing you know it might just be the one thing that you bust out and you're like oh yeah this is the thing i needed um but as always, thank you guys for hanging out today. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you order one of these, uh, I super, super appreciate it. Um, all, all the orders for these stencils, again, help us produce more videos for you to learn how to airbrush. And so I do appreciate every single order. 
Um, and again, all I gotta do is just put it back in my little container here. Right, bam. Close it up. And we got our stencils ready to go for next time. Simple as that. Love it. So again, thank you guys all for hanging out today if you were there in the chat today. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you guys today. So we'll get out of your guys' hair. Um, and we'll be back in a couple days with another stencil. Thank you guys again for all your support. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Later, later, everybody.